I'm Leslie Logan. I'm here at my Pilates Haven with my hot pink window chair, and I'm doing another collaboration with Andrea Maida Pilates. And this week we are talking all about the pull-ups. Um, I have a lot to say about the pull-ups, so I'm going to try not to take too long um, to tell you all the things I want to tell you, because I guess we could always do this one again. Um, one of the things I want to say is that the pull-ups on the window chair were my, my favorite exercise to do when I was a Pilates client only. I just had to always do them um, and as a teacher it's one of the things I really love to get clients doing as soon as possible. Um, it doesn't matter age um, or anything I just think even if you don't move the pedal there's so much to be learned here. Now typically the chair is the pedal is set up at one high one low so in top and bottom spring. Um, for my body that is actually too much spring for me. Um, it tends to kind of push me around and it doesn't force me to uh, connect into the chair in the way that would actually assist and challenge my body to do other Pilates exercises. But before I go to one middle, one bottom, um, I want to show you something that I was taught when I was at the Pilates Center in Boulder, Colorado, that I find really fun to challenge um, you if you've already been doing the pull-ups. So if you want to know how to do the pull-ups, and this is the first time you're hearing about it, please go to my wooden chair playlist and check out the pull-ups on the wooden chair. I have several videos on it and it explains it for more how-to basis. But um, if you've been doing the pull-ups on the wooden chair, um, one of the things you can do is actually start on the top of the chair, like you're in a little crouch, um, kind of like a rolling like a ball position, and place your hands on the front of the chair and then I'm going to lift myself up like I'm doing my tendon stretch and then I'm going to get myself on the pedal. And then I'm going to push the pedal down and pick the pedal back up and I'm going to try to close the spring all the way and push it down and pick it back up. And when you close it all the way, then you can dismount back onto the chair. Okay. So that's a fun way to challenge a more advanced person um, into closing the spring and keeping everything contained. Um, but now for what I love about the pull-ups. So there is um, the pedal pushing down into the pedal is as important as lifting the pedal up. And to lift the pedal up, you must push down into the pedal, which sounds really counterintuitive, but it is essential. So my feet are at the back edge, but my toes are very much on. I don't want to hyper extend my ankles. So be really mindful that you're, you're lifting your heels, but you're not locking them out, right? And then I have to watch out for my right elbow so, you know, it doesn't hyperextend. Now, most people will lean too far over the chair to lift the pedal. We don't want to do that because then we're just letting the pedal push us up. So you want to get your shoulders over your wrists and look in, and you're going to try to push down into your feet and into the pedal, and then make your body stay in this space between the pedal and the edge of the chair and then you have to reach the pedal down from the reach of this here, right? So it's important that you don't pop the butt out and then or lift up and then just fall down. There is this give and take, this tug of war situation that's happening. So when I get to the top, I can then reach through the pedal and then I'm gonna pick my stomach up to pick the pedal up and then I'm going to pick my stomach up to push the pedal down. So that's kind of the seesaw action that is happening. Now, um, there is other ways to challenge someone, right? So that was already pretty hard for me. Um, and I haven't done this in too long, but you could also go to too low springs, which is going to make it even more challenging or uh, one top spring. So if you've ever heard of people doing the pull-ups without a spring, um, it is possible and the way you get there is just to simply start to lighten your load and get ready for it. So here is one top spring and what my body tends to do and that's why I have to be really mindful is it tends to flatten out and go this way to pick the pedal up so I can still do it if I cheat. But if I don't cheat, 
and I am already too far over. So I'm going to try to pull myself back into position. And especially as I go down, <clears throat> right? So you really, you can see how when you change the pedal setting, it changes the challenge to the client. Um, is the goal to do the pull-ups without a spring? No, <laughs> um, but it is an opportunity for someone, right? So we never want to think that, oh, they do the pull-ups perfectly, they never do the pull-ups again. How can we challenge the pull-ups to make the person be able to continue to grow and to get stronger? So one top and bottom is where they would start and then slowly start to move into one middle, one bottom, two bottoms, one top, one middle, one bottom, and then no springs. And when there are no springs, all you do is take the um, springs off, and then they would have their feet underneath the pedal, and then you're here, right? And then you have to pick the pedal up. So um, that is not in my wheelhouse today, but maybe someday it will be, right? I was able to do it a little bit with a little assistance once before. Another thing you can do, if you always find that you're going beyond the chair, like you keep leaning over your wrists, then put the chair really close to a wall, like this far away from a wall, and then tuck your head in, and if you hit the, your back to the wall, you've leaned too far, right? So that the wall can tell you, oh, I'm leaning too far over. Oh, I'm leaning too far over. So that's another way you can challenge it. But honestly, if you're really looking to find the reach from your legs in your teasers and your roll-ups and your footwork, um, the, the pull-ups is really good to help you find that reach down um, that you can carry with you in your entire quest practice. So I hope you enjoyed a few of these little tidbits from me. Go and check out Andrea Maida Pilates here on YouTube for her tidbits on this exercise. And then stay tuned for next week. We will be doing some mermaid stuff. Um, if you have any requests, comment below. And always subscribe to get more videos from us. Thank you for watching.